Martin, after a record dismal voter turnout in Toronto last time around, the city is hoping to make it as easy as possible with early and accessible polling. But is it enough to woo voters back to the ballot box? Whoever wins, just if it's not her and it's somebody else, I hope they do a good job because the citizens are tired. This weekend, you can vote at any polling station you like, no matter what ward you live in. Some of the top candidates taking advantage, but what will it take to get the masses out? Because without concerted action on, our, on the part of reducing emissions, we can expect this normal to grow worse. Well, the smoke may be behind us and the air quality improved for now. Climate scientists and doctors say this isn't a one-off and dealing with these types of conditions is very likely the new normal. Um, I'm very proud of myself as well. Um, and I'm excited for what's gonna come next in my academic journey, my academic career. Meet the youngest university grad in Canadian history. Yep, she's just 12 years old. And today, she's picking up her degree in biomedical science. This is CBC Saturday News. Thanks for joining us with just two and a half weeks to go before Toronto elects a new mayor. Advanced voting is underway. Now the city is hoping to make things as easy as possible. You can cast ballots at any polling station you like, no matter what ward you live in this weekend. As Patrick Swadden shows us, the push comes after a record low turnout last time. Some showed up by themselves, others with their families. And some even showed up with the posse. But one thing these mayoral candidates have in common, they're all getting their vote in early. Beautiful out, bring your kids and show them how democracy works. You know, because it is a mayoral election, you can vote in any poll that you see these yellow and black signs. And she's right. If you vote early this year, you can vote anywhere, but only for advanced polling. A chance to skip the lines on election day where you'll have to vote in your ward. But recent municipal elections show fewer and fewer people are taking that option. I don't think most people are aware of advanced voting. It doesn't tend to attract a lot of people. But Torontonians do care about their city, and everyone has an issue on their mind. Well, homelessness. Harm reduction yeah. and the safety. But I'm stressed and I might never be able to buy a single house. For property taxes. Prioritize the working class. And this voter says, we need to show up. Considering how bad our last uh, mayor election was and how the turnout was for that. Voter turnout the lowest ever in the last election. And with only 29% casting a ballot in 2022, some say it's time for online balloting or... Mail everyone a paper ballot that they either have to fill out or throw out. Make them choose between one of those two actions. But it won't be a problem for these voters. You know, it's kind of our duty, right? These are the people who are making decisions on our behalf. As women and women of colour, um, generations of people who haven't been able to vote, I really think it's important that we make the most of these rights that we now rightfully so have. Yeah. And their message to candidates? Whoever wins, just if it's not her and it's somebody else, I hope they do a good job because the citizens are tired. With advanced voting going on right now, the race is heating up. But we're going to have to wait a little over two weeks to find out who's going to be the next mayor of Toronto. Advanced voting ends on the end of June 13th. Election day is June 26th. Patrick Swan, CBC News, Toronto. Turning to some international news next, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau making a surprise visit to Ukraine. He addressed Parliament alongside Ukraine's president, reinforcing Canada's continued support and stressing the importance of fighting for democracy around the world. My friends, you're not just fighting for your survival. You're fighting for the survival of everything. You're fighting for freedom, for democracy, for the right of self-determination. You're fighting for borders to mean something, even when a neighbor has a bigger armory, especially when a neighbor has a bigger army. The world cannot overstate the gravity of this moment. The world cannot overstate the existential importance of your fight. 
Trudeau spending the day in the capital. Canada's deputy PM, Krista Freeland, was also there. They laid a wreath at the Wall of Remembrance honoring Ukrainians killed defending their homeland. Trudeau also announcing another $500 million in Canadian military aid and funding to help rebuild a dam destroyed in an explosion earlier this week. The prime minister also announced new sanctions against dozens of Russian individuals and organizations. Now, the Canadian government has also announced it intends to seize a Russian-registered cargo aircraft that's currently grounded at Pearson. Now, the targeted aircraft is believed to be owned by two companies Canada recently imposed sanctions on due to their role in President Putin's war against Ukraine. In a statement today, Minister of Foreign Affairs Melanie Jolie says, quote, Today Canada is sending a clear message to the Russian regime that there will be nowhere left to hide for those who support and profit from the Kremlin's war of aggression. Canada has been there to support Ukraine's fight for freedom since day one, and we will continue to be there. The other big story tonight, well, the air quality much improved across the GTA. This wildfire season in Canada is on track to be one of the worst ever. More than 440 fires are burning right now across the country. Thomas Degla brings us the big picture. Those flames raging in the distance forced people in Edson, Alberta, to again leave their homes in a hurry. Traffic is being directed away from the community as that all too familiar haze signals danger nearby. The extreme fire behavior that we're seeing is unprecedented. Our officials are telling us that this is not something they've seen before. Friday night, fire creeped dangerously close, prompting Edson's mayor to issue an urgent warning. Please leave town immediately. Um, emergency crews are not going to be able to help you. Edmonton's Expo Centre is set up to house evacuees once more, two weeks after officials hoped the worst was over. The mood inside is pretty somber. They're, you know, they're, they're willingly here. They don't probably want to be here, but at least they have a roof over their head. Across the country, crews are battling fires from above, with teams from France deployed to Quebec and hundreds more on the way from the U.S., Portugal and Spain. We're still fighting these uh, do those fire. We have about uh, uh, 861 firefighters on the ground right now. Quebec is dealing with more than 140 fires and Environment Canada is warning the worst hit areas might not receive rain until Tuesday. Even then, uh, my, our concern is that, you know, it's not a lot of rain. In B.C., people aren't being allowed any closer than this to the fire near Tumbler Ridge. The crews are hopeful the winds are now working in their favor. Even if it's a small break, it's a welcome one, and, and we're able to get uh, some more intense work done in there. Far away, in bigger cities like Toronto, the air may look better, but it's still posing a risk. Millions of Canadians are affected, with hundreds of fires burning. Thomas Dagg of CBC News, Toronto. As you just saw there, the sky in Toronto looking much more clear and the air quality is better. But as Angelina King shows us, experts say dealing with these kinds of conditions is very likely the new normal. As the smoke from wildfires dissipates and the air clears in Toronto, things are looking and feeling better out there. Despite earlier concerns, the Princess Margaret Ride to Conquer Cancer went ahead today based on the Air Quality Index and consultations with respirologists. So, more than 3,000 people cycled to fight cancer outside with little worry. The organization, I guess, is taking direction from uh, like the Air Quality Index and I trust that they're doing what's in our best interest. Seems pretty good out today anyways, so it should be a good ride. And while the smoke is behind us for now, climate scientists and doctors are thinking ahead, since they say Ontarians should be prepared to deal with air quality like this again, as wildfires are only getting worse across the globe. They are burning larger areas, they're burning over a longer fire season, uh, they're burning more severely, they're burning at higher elevations. And so as we continue to put greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide and methane into the air by burning fossil fuels, we can expect fires like these to grow worse. Christina Dahl says while well, this is our new normal going forward, she hopes that doesn't mean people will become complacent. Because without concerted action on, our, on the part of reducing emissions, 
we can expect this normal to grow worse. Which can come with long-term health risks, chronic lung disease, asthma, and COPD, according to Dr. Chung Wai Chow. But she says wildfire smoke doesn't just affect our hearts and lungs. Increase in rates of respiratory infections, uh, increases in the rate of diabetes, hypertension. I don't want to sound alarmist, but I, I think that everybody, I, I don't think that there's really truly a safe level of exposure. Dr. Chow studied the long-term effects of the severe 2016 wildfires in Fort McMurray and found some of the more immediate effects we may have experienced this week in the GTA could linger. What we learned in Fort McMurray was that a lot of the symptoms in terms of the you know, cough, headache, um, chest tightness, that sense of being short of breath, persists in you know, quite a number of people, uh, despite the fact that this is, you know, a year or so after the event. So I asked for her advice. If this is something we need to be cognizant of moving forward in Ontario, what's the best way to keep safe when it is smoky outside? She says avoidance. Stay inside if possible. Close your windows. If you have an air conditioner or air purifier, turn it on. If you have to be outside, try not to exert yourself so much. And wearing an N95 mask can help. Angelina King, CBC News, Toronto. Sophia joins us now. Yes, good tips for sure. I know it's been such a busy time for you and your team there. Yeah, uh, it's and I continue. It continues to be busy right across the country. The worst start to the wildfire season in decades across the country. Over four million hectares burned. It you can't even comprehend that amount of space. I start with a live look of Parliament Hill. The skies are much clearer. Take a breath of fresh air if you can. I'm going to show you that there is still smoke uh, and current visibility issues. But look at this. This is how far the wildfire smoke is still reaching. It is still reaching down to the far south. But that's in the upper levels of the atmosphere now. So it's not a part of our everyday life as much as it was this past week when places like Ottawa had days upon days of dangerous air quality. This is more of a look of that low level smoke. So there is still smoke continuing to travel into our neck of the woods. And we still do have some lowered current visibility. Now you should be able to see on a normal day between 30 and 48 kilometers ahead of you. Right now, that's cut in half still, but that haze and that campfire smell is generally not in the air as much. And there's a bit of a weather change at play that's gonna mean some good news for this wildfire smoke situation. Enjoy the heat that you had today. There is rain and a troughing pattern coming into the mix over the next few days. It will help suppress the fires and a southerly flow will be a big change for all of us. And I'll tell you about that in the long range. Okay, that is good news. We'll see you shortly. Sounds good. Well, big news today for sports fans. The Toronto Raptors are finalizing a deal to hire their new head coach. Now, this is according to multiple reports, including ESPN. Toronto is hiring Memphis Grizzlies assistant Darko Rajakovic as its new coach. The 44-year-old from Serbia spent the previous three seasons with Memphis. The move comes almost two months after the firing of Nick Nurse. Thousands of cyclists riding together for the Princess Margaret Ride to Conquer Cancer, kicking off an inspiring journey for an important cause, starting in Toronto, heading 200 kilometers to Niagara Falls over the weekend. That's why we have riders traveling from all over the world, like five countries, 17 states, every province are, you know, they come, they, they believe that Princess Margaret is going to be the place where cancer is conquered. And so they're investing their time and they're out there fundraising on our behalf. And we know through our surveys that most of the people who participate have been touched by cancer. It's personal for them. This is a way for them to fight back. And what's super inspirational in our ride is the yellow flag. So people who participate and their survivors, we, we invite them to put a yellow flag on their bicycle. And there's literally hundreds of yellow flags that are riding, you know, between Toronto and Niagara Falls over the weekend. As you heard, every single person cycling has a story and a reason why they ride. Here's more from Riley's Riders. I ride for my son Riley, who lost his battle to cancer um, when he was 
just under the age of three. I want to keep my son's memory alive and turn something so negative into a positive. He constantly had a smile on his face. He would make people laugh. Some days, I, he, he never acted sick. Having Riley's sisters was such a blessing because we couldn't stop. And so we didn't get to shut down and completely stop. We had to keep going. And, and that kind of just snowballed into what can we do, right? And so he has always wanted to start Riley's Riders and it was a dream of his for years. It's something that I definitely want to do when I'm older because it takes a lot of grit and willpower to make it through those two days and I think it's a really great way to honor him and raise money for such like a horrible like disease but to like to make sure like it doesn't affect anyone else the way it like affected us. So we were told the treatment for childhood cancer hasn't changed in 20, 30 years. So the same drugs that Riley was getting were the same drugs that had been used 20 years ago. There'd been no advancements. So for us, you know, having money to do these research things and, and hopefully find better treatments and find better cures so that kids aren't dying of this. Right? Our families don't need to go through what we had to go through as a family. Yeah. That we can one day find a cure for this awful disease so it can stop splitting families apart is the big thing. We heard from them today. They're having a very good day one of the ride. Well, turning to a group of neighbors in Etobicoke celebrating the official start of a construction on a new park places where people can come together, get to know their neighbors, build friendships, and create the kind of communities they want. This was the first milestone in the Mabel Park Transformation Project, which is being led by the nonprofit organization Mabel Arts. Now, it's Canada's first park revitalization led by a community arts organization. The space will feature a new clubhouse and performance stage and a community garden that was designed alongside an Indigenous artist. Today's celebration also featuring Little Amal, that 12-foot tall puppet you see there representing a 10-year-old Syrian refugee. We are sending a big congratulations to a 12-year-old in Ottawa. She's making history tonight in about an hour. She'll be picking up her bachelor's degree in biomedical science, the youngest person ever in Canada to do so. She spoke with our colleagues in Ottawa about her journey. You know, I did kindergarten and first grade when I was free, and then I was trying to go into second grade at four. And I remember my mom contacted 42 school districts and only one of them said they would let me in. <laughs> As long as I was tall enough, they said. I was indeed tall enough. <laughs> when I was transferring into bachelor's programs, I remember one of the big things was people were unbelieving. They did not believe that a person like me could ever possibly exist, which was strange to me because I always read these articles about kids who, like, were smart and they were going to take university credits. But apparently it was weird to have someone in a bachelor's degree doing that. <laughs> What's next for you? So I'm hopefully going to be going into graduate programs in the fall. We're still considering options, um, but you know I'm hopefully going to go to master's, to PhD, and then sometime in the future, um, I'm not in a rush, but sometime in the future, I'll be able to get a career. Uh, I'll be able to have a career as a faculty member where I can both teach and do research. That's my main goal. What's your advice for young women who might be your age, maybe a bit older or even younger, who might think or might see challenges or barriers in the way of their goals? What's your what's your advice to them? So there are, there will always be challenges <laughs> and there will always be barriers and roadblocks, but there is probably a place if you're willing to look hard enough where you can get around that roadblock or that barrier and being willing first of all being willing to go through the hurdles and to jump over at hurdles to find a way to get to whatever your end goal is that's definitely important the second most important thing is not letting other people's notions and other people's opinions affect you so they exist it's important to acknowledge that they exist but it's also important to not let yourself believe them because if you let yourself believe them, you will lose hope in yourself. And that's definitely not what you want to do.
Wow. Powerhouse. Yeah, go girl, go. Yeah, we were going around the room saying, what were you doing at 12? And I think, <laughs> I just think of headgear and awfulness. Yep. <laughs> yeah, there were some braces and some mod robes and uh, not a lot of university courses being had, but what a precedent to be setting. Amazing. Uh, hopefully more to follow in her smart footsteps. Uh, hopefully you're out enjoying the lovely day today. You got to go outside for a little walk. Maybe you're a little bit apprehensive, but it was the warmest day that you will see in the next seven days. Shannon, there's a bit of a change afoot when it comes to our weather pattern over the next couple days. We talked a little bit about still some lowered visibility. There is still a little bit of haze in the atmosphere, but it's mostly at the higher levels right now. So you are breathing that fresh air of relief. That southerly flow has blown a lot of that smoke away. We are seeing the retreat, retreating of a lot of those poor air quality statements as well. They are really just centered around the fire zones in Quebec now. But you remember what it was like as the you know, red sky dawned on New York City and we watched the time lapses and saw the week of poor air quality that looked a little bit like this much different now and for the week ahead you will see this change a cool upper level trough is settling in on top of us it'll start in earnest with a few pop-up showers this evening in parts of the ottawa valley and then a sunday afternoon a few more showers sunday evening into monday more heavy rain will come in to the tune of 10 to 15 millimeters. And actually this upcoming week ahead will be a few degrees below seasonal, tons of cloud cover, and yes, on and off rain, including for anybody headed to the Canadian Open for the last day tomorrow, Shannon. Right, good news for the garden though. Thanks, mm -hmm. Sophia. We all need it. <laughs> Before we go, we gotta give you a heads up if you're taking transit this weekend, you may face some delays. There are a number of closures on the TTC. There's no subway service on line two between Broadview and Woodbine track work on Underway service between St. George and Broadview will begin by noon tomorrow. There's a beam replacement happening there. Plus, Bay and Sherbourne stations will be closed tomorrow. Shuttle buses are running instead and will stop at every route. Now, regular service will pick up again on Monday. That's our show for you tonight. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you again tomorrow.